Hello, in this video, we're gonna talk about the cytokine interleukin-1, how it's made and the effects it has on the body, and also talk about interleukin-1 inhibitors that are used in rheumatological conditions, as well as inflammatory states. These interleukin-1 inhibitors include anakinra, as well as canakinumab. Now, there are many types of interleukin-1 cytokines, but the most well-known is interleukin-1b which plays an important role in inflammation. Interleukin-1b is a potent pro-inflammatory cytokine produced by the immune cells, notably the innate immune system, as well as epithelial cells during a stimulus such as an inflammation or infection. Interleukin-1b, once secreted, acts on different types of cells in the body. For example, it acts on the cells of the vessel, increasing the expression of adhesion molecules. And when it does this, it allows migration of other immune cells to the site of inflammation. Circulating neutrophils and circulating monocytes can get recruited to the sites of tissue inflammation, again promoting the inflammatory response. Interleukin B can also directly activate mature immune cells telling them to produce more pro-inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin-1b as well as TNF-alpha. Interleukin-1b has other functions including acting as a pyrogen, increasing body temperature, a hallmark of inflammation. Interleukin-1b promotes T-cell activity which are cells that are part of your adaptive immune response. Interleukin-1b also stimulates fibroblast proliferation and collagen production, increasing scarring and chronic inflammatory changes. Let's take a look now at how interleukin-1b actually gets produced and secreted during an inflammatory response, looking at this immune cell here as an example. Immune cells have many receptors on the cell surface, which responds to different inflammatory stimuli such as cytokines, component of pathogens, or damaged associated molecular patterns from injured cells. These receptors get stimulated, which initiates a cascade of intracellular events, which will ultimately lead to the activation of transcription factors, which are important in uh, the inflammatory process, such as NF-kappa-B. NF-kappa-B reads genes which will ultimately make proteins TNF-alpha and pro-interleukin-1A and pro-interleukin-1B. TNF-alpha is a pro-inflammatory cytokine and so are the interleukins, but these interleukins are not active yet. Intracellular proteins called uh, node-like receptor 3, N. LRP3 are important in interleukin 1B activation as well as interleukin 1A activation. Essentially, they will activate pro caspase 1 to become caspase 1, which will convert pro interleukin 1A and pro interleukin 1B to interleukin 1A and interleukin 1B. Interleukin 1B is released from the cell and will target these other cells around the area. For example, it will target another immune cell here. Now this target cell will have interleukin-1b receptors on its cell surface. And so when interleukin-1b binds onto interleukin-1b receptors, it will again trigger a cascade of intracellular events within that cell, which will essentially result in the things we described earlier, depending on the cell target. But in summary, interleukin-1b is a potent pro-inflammatory cytokine. Anakinra is an interleukin-1b receptor antagonist. Anakinra prevents interleukin-1b from binding to its receptor. Anakinra does so by essentially binding to the interleukin-1b receptor uh, site where interleukin-1b cytokine would otherwise bind to. Canakinumab is a monoclonal antibody which binds to interleukin-1b cytokines, preventing its effects on the cells. 
Tanakinumab is another interleukin 1b uh, antagonist. It is a monoclonal antibody which binds to interleukin 1b cytokines, preventing its effects on uh, that target cell. Anakinra is used for rheumatoid arthritis and acute gouty arthritis, as well as in TNF-alpha-associated periodic syndrome, TRAPS for short, as well as cryopyrin-associated autoinflammatory syndrome, or CAPS for short. I thought I'd mention something about CAPS, which is the cryopyrin-associated autoinflammatory syndrome. This syndrome is where you have mutation in the NLRP3, which is known as cryopyrin. Remember, NLRP3 is an enzyme important in essentially the activation of interleukin-1. Mutation in NLRP3 results in overactivation of interleukin-1, and so people get febrile, they have joint aches, and other strange inflammatory phenomena. There are three types of CAPS. Familial cold autoinflammatory syndrome, Muckle Wells syndrome, and neonatal onset multisystem inflammatory disease, or NOMID for short. These are all mainly pediatric conditions, I believe. Now, the main, now going back to the interleukin 1b antagonists, the main side effects of canakinumab and anakinra and other biological agents is that it increases the risk of infections. And that's probably the most important thing you need to know. 